Well, a very good afternoon to you and thank you for joining us on Citizen Live at One. My name is Sam Gitoko. We begin our bulletin in Langata, where 20 days after fire destroyed the entire Kijiji slum, uh, displacing 5,000 people, construction works have started on the site. Landlords whose houses were destroyed are catering for the labor cost of rebuilding using some of the material donated by area leaders. Survivors of the January 28th night in Fano uh, meanwhile, still camping at neighboring social amenities, including Gay Primary School. Let's now cross over to the reconstruction site where we will be speaking to the National Disaster Management Unit Deputy Director Pius Masai on the process. And Pius, perhaps if you can hear me, you may begin by telling us how many people are still residing at Gay Primary School and how is the humanitarian situation so far? Over 5,000 uh, families who are still in the school uh, who still need uh, humanitarian aid. We appreciate uh, the support that we have received from the national government uh, and county government also of Nairobi. Uh, we have received overwhelming support from members of the public. They have donated food and non-food items. And as it is now, we are looking towards the exit strategy uh, the structure owners have, uh, have taken this responsibility, uh, liaising the Nyumbakumi uh, initiative, uh, the chairman, Mr. Abdi. They have a committee whereby they are distributing uh, resources, that's the building materials, which they have been given from the national government and county government, uh, in that they are ongoing the reconstruction on their site, and they have discussed within their own committee that soon, preferably from Monday, once some of the structures will be ready, they'll start a what you call exit strategy. And this plan is within the structure owners and the Nyumbakumi initiatives, which they have that plan. Here, uh, as National Disaster Management Unit, we are providing a technical support to provide uh, uh, an instant command structure because this has never happened before. Right. Uh, recovery phase, well structures, whereby uh, multi-agent stakeholders are supporting this activity. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as it is now, families, when they start an uh, exit strategy, uh, they require to go away with some of the food items which you already have in the store. We have maize, we have beans, we have mm -hmm. rice. However, we need more uh, uh, maize flour, we need more rice, we need mm -hmm. more sugar, in that at the exit, the time they start moving away, we expect a family to move out with at least one pail of uh, flour of maize mm -hmm. and some kilograms of beans, some kilograms of maize to start a life. And I believe they'll be so happy uh, once it is done. So we are still appealing to those well-wishers uh, who have been supporting us, supporting the government efforts, to continue with that effort of supporting a life whereby uh, whatever they contribute will be ass uh, assisting the population. And, and Masai, Masai course, just, just to interject, Masai, Masai, if you can hear me, just to yes. interject is that um, we understand that uh, these materials have been provided by the national government and other agencies, including the county government, but what is the arrangement since these houses were owned by private investors and is there a plan to recover maybe the financing that you have given uh, through rent that will be paid? Because you realize that, uh, yes, you have the, the landlords have been affected, but also the, tans have been, the tenants have been affected. Will you be recovering anything now that this is an investment uh, for private developers? Actually, uh, there's a, a well-coordinated arrangement whereby we have Nyumbakumi initiatives. There's a chairman and a number of people who are having uh, plans with the structure owners. They have had several meetings even before the reconstruction started. Uh, that plan is there, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Nyumbakumi chairman even has talked to the press trying to highlight mm -hmm. his plans with the committee. Uh, that will be arranged through themselves and the tenants. Uh, once the structures are completed, they'll benefit out of the program because uh, they are being supported to do reconstruction, being provided by material. As you are aware that in law in this country, mm -hmm. there's nowhere uh, the law states that this one will be done in that arrangement. This is just a matter of assisting the people on basic needs, basic rights, which is very well because when the government started this initiative of supporting the people, also the publics themselves are supporting the activity. What is important here is to right. see people 
assisted to normalcy, and that's what's happening. All right. Thank you so much, Pius Masai, for speaking to us to, on uh, Citizen Live. It one, of course, this is a story that you continue to follow. That has been Pius Masai, the Deputy Director of the National Disaster Management Unit. And now we cross over to a terror story, and emotions run high. At the Chiromo Mochery today, as relatives of three people killed by suspected Al Shabab militants at a public school in Ojir turned up to receive the bodies. The two teachers, Set Oluoch Odada and Kevin Shari, were shot dead by the assailants, while Oluoch's wife, that is Carolyn, was butchered. The latest attack has renewed concerns over the safety of non-local teachers in the northeastern parts of Kenya. Police are yet to make any arrests despite local administration singling out three suspects yesterday. And now to parliamentary matters. Parliament has defended its independence amid claims of encroachment by the executive. National Assembly Speaker Justin Muturi says there was nothing wrong with either the ruling Jubilee Party or the opposition coalition NASA whipping its members to take certain positions on various legislative issues on the floor of the House. Francis Gashuri has the details. As one arm of the government, the spotlight has lately been on Parliament, with the Jubilee Party that has a majority in both chambers of the bicameral 12th Assembly accused of controlling House agenda. But Speaker of the National Assembly, Justin Muturi, insists Parliament is independent, but working interdependently with other arms of the government, the executive and the judiciary. That's not to say that uh, even when you, meet, when you meet like that, members are not, cannot disagree. They can and it's perfectly democratic for even members of a party to even uh, disagree with their, with their parties. That happens. Jubilee party lawmakers recently converged at State House Nairobi for a parliamentary group meeting led by President Uhuru Kenyatta, opposition members of parliament, claiming that the House was no longer independent and was being controlled from State House. There's nothing wrong with those in the minority or opposition meeting and agreeing on how to transact business or those in government meeting and agreeing in general how to treat business appearing before the house that is not controlling the house please i would want you to tell me which democracy you know of even me that has membership in the house and they don't meet their membership how do they how will their members know how to deal with the, business, with the, with the various uh, proposals legislative during the vetting of cabinet secretary nominees, NASA members of parliament kept off the appointments committee, critics terming the vetting process a rubber stamping event since it was a jubilee affair. All the nominees easily sailed through and were sworn in at State House Nairobi yesterday. And you see when people say you are rubber stamping, so when you disagree that is now, is that what, uh, <coughs> is that, that is now the business we are supposed to do? Are we not expected? to look at every issue and make decisions based on its merits. So I think, it's, of course, we, we always, uh, we, it is good to be critical, but also we need to be realistic. Muturi has also defended the nomination and appointment of Sports and Culture Cabinet Secretary Rashid Mohammed, who dropped out at Class 7. If a fellow is able to read and write, be able to express themselves either in English or Swahili, that's all be of sound mind, eh? the person who meets the threshold in the Leadership and Integrity Act, someone who, someone who has shown um, leadership qualities, that's all those are the things to consider. He was speaking in Mombasa during a liaison committee retreat that was attended by chairpersons of various parliamentary committees and the House leadership. Francis Gashuri, Citizen Live, at one.
Let's now move to human wildlife conflict matters. Nine people from Turguita village in Belgut are admitted at the Kericho District Hospital after they were attacked by a stray leopard. Witnesses say the stray wildcat pounced on the villagers as they tried to kill it for attacking their livestock. Most of those injured are now in stable condition, with only three still nursing serious injuries. The villagers eventually managed to subdue the animal, and meanwhile, Belgut MP Nelson Koech has appealed to the Kenya Wildlife Service to visit the area and assist in trapping young cubs left behind by the slain animal. And a private developer has surrendered the title deed to a two-acre piece of land belonging to a public school in Molo. While handing over the document to the National Lands Commission, the businessman called on other individuals holding on to government land to follow suit. Speaking at the same event in Mao Summit area of Molo, NLC Chairman Mohamed Sozuri says gave a 90-day ultimatum to individuals occupying public land illegally to surrender the same or face the law. Sozuri further says the commission is processing title deeds for all government schools to keep land grabbers at bay. He promised amnesty to those who surrender the title deeds within the 90-day period. <laughs> Nasema shamba lingine shamba langu lote ilikuwa ni ilikuwa ni hii. Kwa hivyo naomba serikali siku ya leo aweze kuchale ma, masala yangu wanipatie shamba malingine kwa sababu nimesarenda title yangu hiyo kwa hiari yangu na kwa kupenda kwangu pia. Seria siku hizi ni kuenda kuchukua shamba tu na kutoa mtu. Kwa hiyo kwa haya mashamba ya NYS eh, ni Yata complex kuna mashamba ya NYS Mombasa kuna mashamba ya NYS Eldoret kuna watu wengi walipewa walichukua wali mashamba hayo kwa njia ambazo hazifai hata hayo mashamba hayo tutayarudishi as Ethiopia has announced has announced a state of emergency on Friday, the day after the Prime Minister's resignation, as pressure mounted on the country's ruling coalition. The coalition says it had decided emergency rule was vital to safeguard the constitutional order. Ethiopia only fully lifted its last state of emergency in August, following months of curfews, restrictions on movement, and the detention of 29,000 people. Those measures followed two years of anti-government protests in which security forces killed hundreds of people in Amhara and Oromia the nation's two most populous provinces. The imposition of a new state of emergency indicates that Prime Minister Helmari Desale's resignation on Thursday was the result of tensions among the four parties in the ruling coalition. And that's why we end Citizen Live at 1. Thank you for joining us. Let's do this again tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Have a good afternoon and enjoy the rest of your viewing. My name is Sam Gituku.